lovely creatives. So, in this little video, I'm going to be keeping going with our Neo Color 2 exploration. Um, and this time just doing a few different, um, few different ways that you can use them for those of you who are not so familiar with them. And even if you are, you may pick something up, you never know. Okay, so Neo Color 2 is water soluble. It's a wax pastel, water soluble. It goes down, this is this paper that I'm using <laughs> is uh, just some aquarella paper, cold pressed. I don't really use this much. I'm not keen on this paper, so it's really good for just playing and mucking around. Neocolors are really good because you can lay down a chunk of color pretty quickly to get a solid color like that. Oh, let's try. There we go. So we have, you can see what it looks like dry. We can also activate it. And get a more solid color. We can also use what we've activate to move around. And you can do this pretty much with any of the colors. They're pretty pigment rich. You can take that color like it's so thick, you can use it beautifully. Okay, so because they are so pigment rich, you can use them just with a wet brush. So I've just cleaned my brush off. It's got nothing on it now but clean water. And you can just pick up your colors like that. And of course, splatter. So you can use it instead of watercolors. You can paint with them like you would with watercolors. You can take another, take that other color. Same thing. Each color is going to be a little bit different as to how thick it is with the paint. Now, the other thing you can do with, with them is you can work into wet. So that's a wet patch there. And I can just come in and work straight into that. Or I can take my Neo Color and dip it in my water and draw with a wet, you can see it's drying out there, a wet crayon. You can also use it to mark make or to do your drawing or whatever. And then instead of wetting it with um, a brush, you can just spritz it. Spray is going everywhere but where I want it to go. Everything got activated then. Because the Neo colors can be activated like this, you can also make yourself a, a little mini dot palette that you can take with you, a travel kit, or put together a particular palette. You just kind of put your color down like this um, as much as you want and whatever colors that you'd like to work with. And you've got a super light, super thin, small as you want, cheap as chips, little palette to take with you. And when you're out and about and you want to do some painting, you just can pick up the paint and paint with it. Obviously, the more that you put down, the more you're going to be able to lift it up. Okay. Um, another quick thing you can do with this, like pretty much any water-soluble medium, is you can layer them up to make um, 
optical mixing. So now that we've got those down, we can like activate it. You can create an orange through your mixture. Probably needed a bit more yellow because that red is always going to be stronger. Now, it is a water soluble medium. So once it dries, it can reactivate or even if you're using it dry, it can activate. So there's a couple of things you can do around that. Firstly is um, instead of activating it with your water, you can use a gesso or any sort of acrylic paint really. Now the gesso is going to pastel a little bit because of the white. Of course, if you're using a different color, not so much, but you can get that subtler color with the gesso got sort of a pastel color and of course you can use your gesso from your little palette here as well pick up some color of course it will wreck your palette you'll need to make a new one for another day but you've got a different shade there to picking it up just with the water but a more opaque but pastel color. Okay, now the other thing that you can do is instead of a gesso or a water, you can use a matte medium. Now I just have the golden soft gel matte. This is, you can use a gloss one for a gloss effect. Um, but what it will do is it will activate the pigment but it'll also seal it in as will the gesso so it won't reactivate so we can pick that up and there we go it's that's going to dry that in place now depending on how your brushwork is whether you're just working in spot or whether you want to drag it around and pick the color up and paint with it and you can use this from your little mini palette as well. Instead of water, pick up some color with your gel medium and use that to paint with. Which will give it a more permanent um, finish. Let's try the red, it's a bit more pigment. So it's sort of almost got that water color effect, but it's a bit more glazy and you can build it up. More pigment. Let's try the red with more pigment than a darker color. So you can see that you can just keep that a solid color as well. But if you want to move it around and pick it up on your brush, you're going to get a thinner color, more of a glazing, which you can then layer over another color that's dried. If we let that dry and we come in with, put too much water there, um, if we come in with that yellow again and see what sort of orange we get. Okay, and I guess, and of course that can work for whatever you're wanting to, if you're drawing something, say for example, very rough mug okay let's do some more now we can just get our water to activate it and move it around where we where we can use it um, how we want to sort of like think about where you want the water to the color to actually move to you can just kind of keep it in place and work over the top 
or use it to sort of shade a bit or blur or of course you can just leave it dry same thing with the gel medium using it just like it was a um, water it's a little bit clear a little bit of shading in there and it'll just hold that image in place seal it under Um, with the gesso so three three different effects from Four if we add in a dry one. Oh no, there's a wet in wet with almost wet in wet. So a dry one here. If we're gonna do wet in wet, let's do a proper wet in wet. That's actually putting too much water down. Because the water's quite a the water's sitting on top of this paper, not really soaking in like a good watercolour paper should. You go wet on wet version. So there you go, a couple of different effects. Wet on wet, dry. Wet on to dry. Uh, gel medium and gesso. Now I'm just going to move that aside for a sec because I have a black card here and I have some acrylic paint down. It's still a little bit damp. Just give it a hit. Well, that's just having a final dry. Neo color is quite because it's so pigment rich. It goes really beautifully over a dark color, and you get pretty good coverage pretty fast. And you can have it expressive or solid or whatever you want to do. It's almost dry, and it will go over. The acrylic paint beautifully so really nice over other colors to layer over other materials watercolor that's dried um, markers paint pencil whatever you've got neo color is a great one to layer it's not the best one to go on top it's it's a good one to go underneath uh, let me say that again it's not a good one to work on top of but it is a good one to go on top of your other um, your other mediums. All right, let's get this one back again. Get this page off. This is just those beautiful um, blossomings like watercolor does. And look how rich these pigments are. They're really rich. Oh, that one's dry. Let's try that with some glazing over the top there. So picking up some of that yellow and just coming over that. I'm just gonna put a little bit more down because that one's really wet from, from water. You can see how we're getting a nice orange there from the colors layering up like watercolor like stained glass really pretty so let's just move that you can also use um, neo colors onto into wet paint a lot of my a lot of my neo colors have paint on the end of them so let's see, so you can mark, make into some wet paint and then you end up with that on the end, which is fine because 
Let's find one. Need sharpening. We can sharpen them. So you can have these really thick, whoops, they snap very easily. And a lot of artists will snap them um, just so that they have them snapped. And then you can use them like that as well on this side for shading. And of course, let's move that over there. You can sharpen them. And this is the Derwent Pastel Sharpener because it's, it's big enough to take them. It's like it's wide and the opening is wide enough and it does a pretty good job of sharpening them. And then you can get quite delicate lines with your Neo Color. So if you're like me and you hate wasting art materials or hate wasting anything really, then um, a little tip I have for these pencil shavings or crayon shavings, I should call them, is to take one of these uh, little pans that are designed for watercolor. They come in different shapes or anything that will hold it that is going to work, obviously, discretion because we're going to take these pieces and drop them in there like this. Trying to get as many as I can in. And take that, I'm going to pop it in the microwave for about 30 seconds or if you don't have a microwave, you could float it in like a bath of hot water. Just you've got to obviously keep the water lower and you have to weigh it down a bit so it doesn't float about. Just long enough for the shavings to melt because this is a wax crayon. So once they're done, they come back like this and so they're not going anywhere. This one here has the purple with a little bit of blue. You can have a single color, you can make a multicolored one. Uh, you just might want to think about mixing your colors. Uh, maybe don't mix your warms and your cools too much so you don't get too much mud, but you can make these little watercolor palettes, which you can then use to paint with. And you haven't wasted your materials. You're just using it in a different way. That's only if you're wanting to sharpen them as, and you don't want the wastage of the sharpened bits. Okay, let's do a very rough little face here. So let's do a strange little face here. A moon face. And we've got, let's give this one some rosy cheeks. We'll put a little little bit of cool in there. Maybe on this side we're going to put a little bit of a warmer colour. This my yellow. Bit of that down there. Let's give it a rosy nose and a bit of green. I think I'm going to come back for the like the eyes. We're not going to do the eyes now. They were when this layer is dried was when I would come in with the lips and eyes. I think what am I trying to say? Uh, this moon character. has no features. Hmm. So 
gonna lighter green here. And just into here as well, maybe. Ooh, that green around there makes that pop. Now we can activate that. We can move it around. What do I wanna do it with? Let's try a little bit of gesso. Now, we can blend or we can sort of like try and keep it in place and um, those colors will stay there. Now wash off my brush, pick up some more gesso. Let's go into this side here. So essentially, the near color is toning or coloring the um, the gesso. face we could come over with some features now I've done that half of the face with the gesso I'm just going to come in with the matte medium just for illustrative purposes so you can have that you can use that as well and have a less pastel effect I'm dabbing to try and keep the colors in place but if you wanted to move them around you could use more of a dragging motion like like that blend out those blend out that rosy cheek there we go we've got a little face that you could then Come over the top with some features. We could do the same thing. Just trying to pick one that doesn't quite need some sharpening. They're fun to use in that way because they're big and chunky. There's not a lot of control, so it does keep you a little bit loose. Okay, and you can activate this and work out where you want your shadings to go. Under the eye there. A little bit down here. Rosy cheeks. Really did those cheeks wonky, her lips wonky, didn't they? Anyway, you get the idea. Play. 
play with it like it's um see what you get and of course I've overplayed but that's part of the fun see what you can do it is all experimentation and watching what happens God, looks like he's got a moustache. <laughs> All right, I'm going to stop there because I just could keep fiddling. But play, play, experiment, the um, glazing with it, mixing them, water, medium, acrylic medium, spritzed, gesso, drawing into wet, wetting the brush, mixing the colors while they're wet like a watercolor Sp um, splatters dry on dry little palette you could take Oops. didn't use any of this let's put a little bit of rose Okay, <laughs> oh, and onto acrylic and onto dark colors. Okay, so lots of different things you can do with your Neo Color too. Have fun, play, experiment. So a quick show and tell. This is a quick drawing that I did where I have used the Caran Dash in the background to lay down a background fast. Um, and expressive with a lot of different colors and mark making. Um, in this tree here, there's um, Neo Color to add different textures and varieties and marks along with pencil, textures and other mark making material. Um, here's another example where I've put the Neo Color over the hot pink. And then I have gouache over the top of the Neo color to make this sort of like to push it back and to have a little bit showing through, but also different texture. Um, that's about all I could find right now, but a great fun tool to grab in your mark making. A couple more. These um, color abstracts have uh, the Neo colors used mixed in with other media. So a lot of other media from gouache, um, watercolor and acrylic paint. Um, but in here amongst it all, creating some of the marks and the colors and the layers is Neo Color too. Um, in here as well. As part of the general mix, these lines here, Neo Color too. There's probably some under that's been water activated as well. Quite possibly in here as well. I think that's all paint. There's some Neo Color marks going in here, along with um, paints and inks and so forth. So paint. There's probably some in there somewhere. Some mark making with the Neo Colors. So lots of different ways that you can use them as a mark making expressive tool. In this mixed media art journal piece, I've just used the Neo Color over the top of some paint just to make it pop a bit more. Different texture, a little bit more vibrancy.
into my little Pippi Longstocking sort of character here. It just goes really beautifully over the top of all of these mediums. On this page, I have ink, acrylic paint, with some crayon already. There's a shellac ink, there's collage, gesso, gel mediums, all sorts of things. And there you go, I just just gave it, just gives it a zing, that, like icing. It's like a little bit of icing on top.